Morris Media, good evening all and welcome. Tonight, I have a collection of ghost and paranormal stories for you all. So buckle up, because it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I live in an apartment that was built in 1989. Let me just go over the layout because it's important. It's a pretty standard place, but it has a loft and it's a bit cramped. I don't really like it. I find it kind of creepy. There's a certain sense of vulnerability that comes with having a loft, which I can't quite explain. But by the end of the story, you'll understand why it frightens me. It all started with a feeling one night after work. I hadn't been able to shift this feeling. And as soon as I came through the door, the first thing I see as I enter the apartment is my loft. And I get the feeling that something was watching me from up there. At first, I just thought it was my tired mind conjuring up something. You know, this has happened before when you get tired. But this time, it felt different. Little did I know, a grudge was born that day. When you're in bed in the loft, you naturally look out and down and see the entryway leading to the kitchen. So naturally, when I sleep, I sleep on my side. And therefore, before I face the entryway to the kitchen, sometimes before sleep comes for me, I get the strong feeling that someone is looking at me, staring at me from down there in the entryway. In uneasy times like that, I try to read or get myself to sleep as soon as possible. I hit the lights so I don't get distracted and just use a little nightlight near my pillow to read my book. However, one night, a deep sense of unease crept over me. I felt as if something was wrong. I heard a noise coming from down below. The lights were off down there. I listened carefully, and it sounded as if someone was exhaling. It definitely sounded like breathing. The second my mind understood that I was hearing breathing, I stayed deathly still. I was completely terrified. My heart began thundering in my chest as I thought there was an intruder in the house. The air in the room felt heavy and oppressive, and it enveloped me. It was all around me. The room seemed to grow darker, and I felt strange. I could still hear the noise. It resounded around the room below, and it sounded closer. Beneath the loft, you see, there was a blind spot. But I felt as though I'd pinpointed the spot where the breathing sound was coming from. Someone was certainly down there with their back against the wall. I managed to convince myself of that when I imagined that. I shuddered, drew my shoulders up to my chin, and held my covers tight. It was like a stalemate. I couldn't do anything. And the feeling that there was someone down there wouldn't go away. After a moment or two, the breathing suddenly stopped. I thought it was all over that I had imagined the whole thing, and relief washed over me. But then, in that moment, I heard a familiar sound that I had heard many times before. It was the instantly recognizable sound of someone climbing the ladder which leads to the loft. It sounded exactly like someone was coming up towards me. I was frozen with fear, and again, I was unable to move. My mind was a mess of fear and worry as I had heard the sound of someone climbing. But then, clarity came to me swiftly. I made up my mind to deal with whoever was coming up. And I was certain that I would see someone's head emerge in a matter of seconds. Those seconds felt like hours. The tension was unbearable. Nothing came into view. And then the sound stopped. It stopped at the top of the ladder. If someone was on that ladder, I would have seen them. It sounded like whatever came up the ladder was now in the loft with me. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was sure there wasn't an intruder in the house. 
And as soon as that thought crossed my mind, my nightlight went out, and I was plunged into absolute darkness. Then, close to my ear, I heard three words which chilled me to my core. Who are you? I cannot remember much after this point. I must have fainted. It was morning when I awoke. I don't know why, but I don't really feel the need to pursue or search for meaning or an explanation to this experience. I'm debating whether or not I should move out. I feel like it could just be the beginning of something. And there's definitely something bad in my apartment. And I don't think I'll be able to stand it if something happens again. Last year, I moved home. I changed job in the autumn. At the time, it was my sixth job change. It just wasn't working out. It didn't seem to ever work out back then. And I had less than a month to find somewhere to live before my job started. And it was in a new city. I didn't have much time, but I managed to arrange a viewing for five apartments that met my needs. And I was excited to see what they looked like in person. I knew it was going to be difficult, but at least I had a few options. One of the apartments that I arranged to view was the one my wife had high hopes for. She really liked it. The rent, the size, the age of the place, and the area all seemed fantastic. We really wanted it. It would be great for the new job too. A five minute walk to the station. And work was about a half hour commute away. It seemed perfect. We wanted that one. But I felt like I needed to see the place in person check out the area. Plus, I had four others to check out too. We were supposed to go and check out the apartment together, but we got some unexpected news. My wife was pregnant. I said that I would go alone so that she could have the morning to tell everyone. You know, I scheduled the viewing for the apartment we wanted the most at the end of the day, my last appointment. Well, I wasn't impressed with the first few apartments. They either made a mistake with the listing or weren't entirely honest with me. For example, the size of the apartment wasn't described for the first one. And the second one, they said, would be a five minute walk to the station. But it was a 25 minute walk at best. The other one was a bit weird. The photos on the website didn't matched what it looked like in reality. But in person, the apartment looked like it had been dragged from the 80s. I didn't get why people couldn't be honest. It dampened my hopes for my final apartment viewing. I was getting a bit nervous. All our eggs were in this one basket now. I couldn't believe how much time I had wasted. By the way, it was the same real estate agent on each apartment viewing and I had really grown to dislike him by this time. When we reached the final appointment, I almost walked away. I hadn't ever experienced this kind of service before. He said something along the lines of, well, I guess you're nearly out of options, but I think this last apartment will meet your needs. I didn't care for his tone or jokey attitude. When we arrived, I noticed that the exterior of the building looked a bit newer than as advertised. This real estate agent, seriously, it looked clean and the real to let slip that there was a cleaning crew who attended every week. It was a lot better than expected. The elevator was modern. The windows looked sturdy and safe and it was looking good. Nice clear hallways, nothing piled up. That was good for us. We used to have a neighbor who piled all kinds of junk in the hallway. Before I even looked inside the apartment, I had decided this was the one. I was getting good vibes. When I finally got in, I saw it had been freshly renovated. It was bright and clean. And I sent a picture to my wife of the cooker, since I knew she was a fan of gas cookers, rather than the electric types you often got in apartments and she loved the look of the kitchen. Next, I saw the closets, and they were massive. I 
tried to take a bunch of photos, but most of them didn't work out properly. I had an old phone and tried to take pictures on my phone until it got a little embarrassing, and I just gave up. Finally, I saw a balcony which looked amazing. It was nice and wide, and I saw myself drinking out there on summer evenings and my wife growing a few plants. As I opened the balcony door and stepped out onto the balcony, I felt something. An intense shiver run through my body, and then my skin broke out in goosebumps. It was autumn, but it wasn't chilly. In fact, it wasn't a sunny day, and there was no breeze. The feeling I felt was one of fear rather than a change of temperature. Something wasn't right. I thought to myself, I'm not really sure I like this room. That moment though, I thought that. I suddenly felt a shove in my back. If it wasn't for the balcony railing, I would have gone tumbling over the five floors and I would have perished. I instinctively turned to glare at the real estate agent, only to see him on the other side of the room. I knew he knew something. That was why he'd been setting me up with all the garbage apartments earlier. He wanted me to pick this one. He called out to me as if he were expecting it. You're right, mate. As if I had stumbled on the threshold to the balcony, which we both knew wasn't true. I know I didn't trip on anything. I was shoved. I didn't reply. What could I say? A moment or two passed and I and thought to myself, well, I could have just been imagining things. Was I really going to turn down this dream apartment because I got goosebumps and potentially stumbled over something on the balcony? I decided to leave the apartment as calmly as possible. When I got outside, I met eyes with another resident on the same floor. It was a young woman. She appeared married by her ring. She locked eyes with me and shook her head slowly from side to side. I swear to God, if I could read minds, what I would hear would be her saying, stay out of there. I headed home to tell my wife about my disappointing and creepy experiences. She was annoyed. She said that we were about to miss our chance for a great apartment. She was really pissed for me not snapping it up. I kept telling her, was just something off about that place, and that we should keep looking for somewhere better. I started the search for somewhere new immediately, and during my search, I found a website that lists the histories of some properties. I searched for the apartment that I looked at where I felt the shove, and bingo, there it was. Someone had taken their life by jumping from that very balcony. I showed my wife. And for once, she agreed that I did something good. I felt like we avoided something potentially dangerous. So much for the apartment we wanted. This happened before a national holiday, not too long ago. I didn't have school the next day, and that was always a huge cause for celebration. But I was kind of up late for my age. It was about 10.30. I was in high school back then. I'll just have to quickly explain my family dynamic because it will make sense later. When I was younger, my father sadly passed away and my mom works all the time and I live with my grandparents. That night, my granddad was out and my grandma was somewhere downstairs. I was studying for exams, high pressure stuff I was supposed to care massively about for some reason. I was more interested in my music back then, to be honest. I used to listen to my tunes through my PSP, and I was taking a break from studying. You know, gotta give my eyes a rest. So, I sat down my PSP and leaned back on my chair and closed my eyes for a minute. I opened them and looked at my bedroom door. I noticed something in that moment that sent my head into a tizzy. It was this figure of a person person who wasn't a family member. Just this shadowy shape peering at me from around the door of the room across the hall. Across the hall was an empty room. 
There was no logical reason why that shadow should be cast in that room at all. At first, I thought that my mama or grandma had left the window open to air out the house, and I was seeing a very human-looking curtain position. Or said, curtain being caught on the balcony or something. It seemed highly implausible, though, especially since the way it was. It appeared to be leaning around the door to look at me. It was no trick of the light. I watched that shadow, then emerge from the spare room and enter the hallway. It was like it was fixated on me, even though it was dark. I could tell by the movements of that thing that it was facing me. It crept around the door into the hallway, with its back against the door on the hallway wall. I then watched it as it slowly backed off towards the stairs. And before I could see it descend the stairs, it disappeared. Here's the weird thing. It looked like it was the same height as me, and by its silhouette, it looked like it had the same hair and clothes I had on. It's quite challenging to explain, really. Now, like I said, it was just my grandma and I in the house at the time. She didn't go upstairs much because she has bad hips, but if it was her, I would recognize her silhouette, and surely she would hit a light or something. I was left there in my chair, shuddering, trying to understand what I had just witnessed. What does it mean? Something that kind of looked at me was looking at me from the other room. Why? For what purpose? Was this some kind of spirit or a shadow person? Did it leave because I spotted it? What would have happened if I didn't notice its presence? I was just horrified when my brain surged and searched for a logical answer and came back with none. It was just terrifying. I began to freak out and then thought, oh God, what if it returned? I didn't want to go down because that would be the last place I saw that thing head off to, and I still have no idea what the hell it was. And I've lived in that house right until I moved out, and fear that I would see the shadowy figure again. But thankfully, until now, I haven't. I did wonder if it could have been a home intruder. I was young, but I'm not sure. I might have seen some features of the invader or their clothes, but I didn't. I never told anyone in my family about what happened that night because I was worried that they would laugh at me and call me weak. And I didn't want my mom to worry about me when she was out working so many hours. I do wonder if they would have believed me sometimes. This happened when I was 26 years old. I was working at a pretty big company. I thought that I had it made, you know? I just graduated from university and had landed a really decent job. And I quickly realized that everything was not as it seemed. I tried to stick it out, but man, I hated that job. They took advantage of me. Every holiday request I put in was denied and the hours were way longer than advertised. I saw no progression there and everyone was horrible. I was exhausted and underappreciated, so I quit. I had to get another job pretty quickly if I wanted to afford rent, so I took a temp job in sales. It wasn't as stressful, and it wasn't as respectful, but I'd finally achieved a nice work-life balance. One thing I had to change, though, was my apartment. I used to live in a pretty swanky place downtown but I could no longer afford that on the new job salary, so I had to move somewhere a little cheaper. My new place was okay, I guess. I didn't really have much space, but it was decent enough. But then something strange happened. It happened when I was about a month and a half into my life at the apartment. I got home kind of late that night. I ran a bath and was heating up my dinner. I took my bath at around 11 p.m. and I was just relaxing. I had washed my hair and was feeling overheated. Since I lived alone, I had no issue to hop out of the bath and run to the fridge to grab myself a cold drink. And that is exactly what I did. I opened the bathroom door 
and froze in place. I couldn't believe my eyes. There were wet footprints on the carpet. I was in the bath the whole time, and it wasn't raining that night, so I couldn't believe it. Those were not my footprints. The footprints led from the bathroom outwards into the lounge. I wrapped a towel around myself and cautiously followed the footprints. They went from the bathroom through the lounge into the hall and into my bedroom. They seemed to stop at my bed. At first, I thought, oh God, someone's broken in and they're hiding under my bed. So I carefully backed out of the dark bedroom and headed to the kitchen. I grabbed a knife from the kitchen to protect myself. I had no idea of what would come next. It was an incredibly tense and stressful situation, but I knew I had to react. I had to do something. I summoned all of my courage, stormed into my bedroom, hit the lights, and looked under the bed. But there was nothing but a pitch black, empty space staring back at me. No one was there. My heart was racing. I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. I went to the door and checked that it was locked. It was locked with a chain. There was no sign that it had been kicked in or tampered with at all. I was relieved, sure, but the mystery of the wet footprints wasn't resolved. I couldn't escape the fear of the unknown. What the hell was that? I went back to the bathroom, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I quickly rinsed my hair off. Man, that was a horrible few seconds. I dried my hair with my back to the wall, terrified yet trying to compose myself. I had to go to bed, but there was no way in hell I would be sleeping in the dark that night. I got into bed, and surprisingly, I felt as though I wouldn't have much trouble sleeping. Perhaps I was more tired than I realized. I don't know how long I'd been asleep, but suddenly, I woke up. I'm not sure if it was because I was sleeping with the lights on. I usually sleep in the dark. And it's always hard to stay asleep or fall asleep with the light on for me. It was like it was dark outside still. You know, that feeling when you wake up in the middle of the night and you feel as if it's morning, but it isn't. I guess it was kind of like that. I had a faint sound coming from somewhere down the hallway. It was the sound of the bathroom opening. I gripped the covers as tightly as possible. My fingers must have been turning white from the pressure I was applying. I froze. I was praying that it was just my imagination, but I was wrong. I heard what sounded like footsteps. Next, the footsteps sounded sort of wet. Whatever that was, it was making that noise and left those footsteps while I was in the bath and now, heading towards the bedroom, I guessed that they were coming towards me. Just like the footprints I saw when I got out of the bath to the lounge, through the hall, and finally, the bedroom. I cannot describe how terrifying that was. Hearing footsteps in my home coming from the bathroom, I knew that I was the only person in the apartment. I knew the doors were locked. I knew there was no one hiding as I had searched while armed. And the quality footsteps seemed to mock my belief and logic. They were absolutely unexplainable. They were paranormal. The footsteps didn't rush or move at what I would be. Describing as a normal pace, it was stilted and slow paced. At some points, I swear it was as if 10 seconds had passed between each step and I'm in bed trying to rationalize everything, hoping that my brain can guide me to an explanation. I tried to believe that I was wrong. Maybe it was street noise or a neighbor, but in my heart, I knew I was wrong. Those footsteps were getting closer. My back was facing the bedroom door and the covers were over my head. I could sense something approaching if I'd have dared pop my head out of the safety of my covers, I swore I would have seen a breath of fog. All the while, the squelching footsteps are getting louder, louder, and louder. 
and I'm just laying in bed, screwing my eyes as tightly shut as possible. All I could do was shiver. The footsteps finally approached my bed, and I felt what I can only describe as a cold gaze fall on my back. I was very, very aware that I wasn't alone. I know this sounds hard to believe, but what can I say? A couple of agonizing seconds go by, and then something happens. The feeling of being glared at, the icy chill to the room, and the footsteps all went away. Then I heard the sound of something shuffling and maneuvering itself under my bed. The room was silent, except for that one sound and it sounded like something held its breath, as if to make itself comfortable under the bed. What could I do? I just stayed silent. I couldn't bear the tension, yet I couldn't summon the bravery to move. How long was I like that? I don't know. A minute? I say that because that minute is definitely longer than a minute. An hour? Half an hour? My perception of time was out the window. And then, a horrific sound filled the room, a terrible trill. I knew the sound, and it came from my alarm clock. I set it to go off every morning at 6 a.m., and I hurriedly reached for my phone and turned the alarm off. I don't know why, but all I can say is that when I woke up, I guess I was asleep. Maybe. Anyway, when it was 6 a.m., I didn't think that there was a presence under the bed anymore. I took the plunge, leant over the side of the bed, my hair touching the ground, and peered into the space underneath. Again, there was nothing but darkness looking back at me, but I will say that the space underneath my bed did look a little damp. After that, I had to move out. It was hell. It wasn't ever as bad as that after that night, but on multiple occasions before I left, I heard doors open and drawers open, the drip, drip, drip of water in the bathroom. I would love to know what happened in that apartment before I got there, but I'm not in a hurry to find out. It was terrifying enough. This happened when I was in elementary school, roughly 11 years old. My parents were called away urgently because one of my aunties or uncles needed urgent childcare. I remember it was a Saturday, and my parents planned to leave at dusk, and I was tasked with keeping an eye on my cousin since I was the eldest. I had a choice to go with my parents, and I wish I had, but it seemed more fun to stay at home with my cousins. The cousins in question were a seven-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl, siblings, kept nagging at me to go and play with them. I couldn't take it anymore and buckled to the persistent requests from my little cousins. The younger sibling demanded a game of hide and seek. I didn't mind that. I wasn't too cool for a game of hide and seek. And I thought that if I let them go and hide, I would have a couple of seconds of peace while I counted down before I had to find them. I counted down from 50 and then I went to look for them. My male cousin, the older sibling, hid in a nearby wardrobe. He was easy to find. His sister, however, proved to be incredibly challenging. I couldn't really be bothered to search every place in the house, so I thought if I called out to her, I would be able to find her. I walked around the house, asking out loud, are you ready? Because she was little and didn't really understand the premise of the game, she would enthusiastically answer, Yes, I am. It sounded like she was hiding under the bed. I bent down as silently as I could and looked under the bed, but there was no one there. Strange. I called out again, Are you ready? Then I heard suppressed laughter coming from a wardrobe, a different one from the one I found my cousin in. So I threw the door open with a smile, but then found it empty. At this point, my aunt joined the hunt. She was a good hider. I'll give her that. We 
couldn't find her. After a few more minutes of searching, I began to get uneasy. I got a little scared, so I called out to her one more time. I surrender. You win. Can you come out now? I heard the bathroom door creak open and saw her smiling, victorious face. I just looked at her in the bathroom, though it was pretty strange. I asked her outright where she had been hiding. But after she stopped celebrating her victory over me, she replied, Ah, that's a secret. We decided to play a board game after that. But all the while, I couldn't get my mind over what had just transpired. It was stuck in my head. Where the hell was she hiding? Later that night, my cousin's father came to pick up his children since the hour had grown late. I decided to go to bed myself. While in bed, I couldn't stop thinking about that game of hide and seek. I think I must have dozed off. I heard a voice, you know, like in a dream state, right before you plunge into a deep sleep. You're hovering on the edge of consciousness. It was in that moment when I heard something. A voice from within my dark bedroom said, Are you ready? I jolted awake, like the feeling you have in a dreamlike state when you feel yourself falling. The room was still dark, and I could feel the weight of something in the air. The voice didn't sound like anyone I knew, and it was coming from somewhere near the closet. My heart started racing as I tried to make sense of what was happening. Was I still dreaming? Was it my imagination playing tricks on me? But before I could gather my thoughts, I heard it again, louder this time. Are you ready? I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized that the voice wasn't coming from inside my head. It was coming from the closet. I lay there frozen, unable to move, as the voice continued to taunt me, and then, just as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. The room fell silent once more, but the sense of dread lingered. I lay there for what felt like hours, too afraid to move, too afraid to even breathe. Eventually, exhaustion took over, and I must have drifted off to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, the sun was shining, and everything seemed normal again. The memory of that voice, that chilling, otherworldly voice, stayed with me long after that night, falling. Then I heard it a second time. Are you ready? It was very faint, but I heard it. It was there. The voice didn't belong to either of my cousins. It wasn't a young voice. I covered myself from head to toe in my duvet and blankets. The voice sounded old, adult and female, and I heard it again. It sounded like it was getting closer, and my body started to involuntarily panic. My heart was thumping. Are you ready? I couldn't reply like my cousin did. I couldn't say, yes, I am. I didn't know what that would entail. I didn't want to know what would happen if I did that. I felt so scared and stressed, and I was still young. So the only logical answer that came to me was, I'm not ready yet. I heard the old woman's voice whisper somewhere close to my bed, in a voice as raspy as a mosquito. Are you ready? I felt as though I was about to be found in a game of hide and seek that I didn't even enter into. This was the moment the duvet and blankets were vigorously thrown upwards from my head. I screwed my eyes as tightly shut as I could and let out the loudest scream I've ever heard. I fearfully opened my eyes after a few seconds and saw nothing but my dark and empty bedroom. I have no idea what the hell that was, and I stayed up until my parents got home, absolutely petrified. This happened when I was 19. It was when I was in my hometown visiting my parents. My parents live in the city, and it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to park at home sometimes. I often end up parking halfway down the street and walking there. On the night of this experience, 
I parked down the street and a little around the corner. I visited them, had dinner, caught up, you know, and then said my goodbyes at around 10 o'clock. So, to get back to my car, I had to head down the street and through an alley. My car was parked just at the end of the alley. I got through the alley fine and back to my car. As I was about to go into my car, I noticed something in the alley. It wasn't dark enough for it to be pitch black out, and it was summer, so there was still some faint natural light out at the time. I saw something in the alley which appeared to be the shape of a person. It was heading down the alley towards me and my car. It was almost swaying. It was the strangest thing, quite eerie actually. It was twisting and wiggling. It didn't look normal at all. I thought that it was trouble, you know, some kind of weirdo or something trying to distract me. And I decided to get into the car and get the hell out of there. That figure made me feel very uncomfortable. It's so hard to explain. So I just feel like asking a question at this point. Can humans look distorted? It's like he was glitching out, like it was a few frames behind real time. It sort of jiggled to the left and right. It was hard to make out because it was dark. But as soon as my eyes noticed that thing in the alley, it was pretty much unmissable. I strained my eyes and saw it. I saw that thing so clearly. I wish I got out of there sooner than I did. But I was almost hypnotized by the thing. When it reached the end of the alley, it was showered in the light of two street lights. Only then, when it was fully illuminated, was I able to see what the thing was. And to be honest, I still have no clue what I saw that night, but I will try my best to explain it. It was completely pink, sort of skin tone. It looked like meat. That's all I can really describe it as. It was just some amalgamation of meat, crudely shaped like a human, and a chill ran down my spine. I was overcome with fear, fear, and anxiety after seeing that. Even though I could have easily just gone back to my parents' house, I decided to drive all the way home. It was like I was repelled. I needed to be so far away from it. I knew that just looking at it wasn't good enough. I knew that just looking away wasn't enough. It was innate. Some primal voice told me to get the hell away and fast. Something inside me told me that if I went back to my parents, then the thing would follow and get in somehow. I know I sound completely crazy, but that's how I felt. I had to get away, so I did. When I drove off, I looked in my rear view mirror and noticed that the thing from the alley wasn't pursuing me. It didn't make it any less terrifying though. A few weeks later, I decided to pay my parents another visit. I guess this is because the incident in the alley was still on my mind. I actually decided to mention my experience to my mother and I was surprised by the response I received from her. Oh, so you saw that down the alley? Through our front door, and not be you. I felt a shiver run down my spine as my mind raced to make sense of what had just happened. If it wasn't my wife, then who or what did I hear? And why did it feel so real? I hung up the phone and immediately checked the security footage from the cameras. To my astonishment, there was no sign of anyone entering the house during the time I heard the noises. No movement, no plastic bags being carried, nothing. It was as if I had imagined the whole thing, but I knew deep down that wasn't the case. Feeling unsettled, I tried to shake off the strange occurrence and went back to my room, but the feeling of unease lingered, creeping into every corner of my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, that I wasn't alone in the house, as the evening wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind outside made me jump. I felt like a prisoner in my own home, trapped with the uncertainty of what lurked in the shadows. 
Eventually, exhaustion took over, and I drifted off to sleep. But even in my dreams, I couldn't escape the feeling of dread that had settled over me like a heavy fog. When I woke up the next morning, the events of the previous day felt like a distant memory. But deep down, I knew that whatever had happened wasn't just a figment of my imagination. There was something in that house with me, something that didn't belong. To this day, I still can't explain what happened that afternoon. Was it a ghost, a trick of the mind, or something else entirely? I may never know for sure, but one thing's for certain. I'll never forget the feeling of fear that gripped me that day, as usual preparing for the next day's rush of visitors. It was late, and the park had long closed its gates to the public. As I wiped down the candy displays and rearranged the merchandise, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The store was dimly lit, with only the soft glow of the overhead lights illuminating the rows of sweets and souvenirs. I tried to brush off the feeling of unease, chalking it up to exhaustion from a long day of work. But no matter how hard I tried to distract myself, the feeling persisted, growing stronger with each passing minute. As I made my way to the back of the store to restock the shelves, I heard a faint sound coming from somewhere in the darkness. It was like a whisper, barely audible, over the hum of the air conditioning unit. I froze, straining my ears to catch any sign of movement. Suddenly, I heard it again, louder this time. It was a voice, unmistakably human, but with an eerie, otherworldly quality to it. My heart raced as I realized that I was not alone in the store. Trembling, I called out, asking if anyone was there. My voice seemed to echo off the empty walls, unanswered. Panic began to set in as I fumbled for my phone, desperate to call for help. But before I could dial a number, I felt a presence behind me, cold and unsettling. I turned around slowly, dreading what I might see. To my horror, there was nothing there, no one, just the empty aisles of the store bathed in the soft glow of the overhead lights. I stood there for what felt like an eternity, paralyzed with fear. Eventually, I gathered the courage to continue my work, but the feeling of being watched never left me. When my shift finally ended, I practically ran out of the store, eager to escape the oppressive atmosphere that had engulfed me. To this day, I still can't explain what happened that night. Was it just my imagination playing tricks on me? Or was there something more sinister lurking in the shadows of trolley treats? Q-Line, assuming it was just a late visitor, I radioed my coworker to check it out. But when he got there, he radioed back saying there was no one there. Confused, I checked the security cameras again was no sign of the kid. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. I brushed it off as a trick of the light, or my imagination playing tricks on me, and continued with my closing duties. But as the night went on, strange things kept happening. Lights flickered, doors creaked open and shut on their own, and I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I tried to ignore it, chalking it up to nerves from working late at night, but then I heard it, a child's laughter echoing through the empty ride. I froze, my blood running cold as I realized I was alone in the queue line. I called out, asking if anyone was there, but the only response was the sound of my own voice echoing back at me. Terrified. I ran to the control room and checked the security cameras again. To my horror, I saw the same kid from earlier, running through the queue line and disappearing into the darkness. 
I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was impossible for anyone to enter the ride without being detected. Yet there he was, defying all logic. I immediately called my supervisor and told him what I had seen. He arrived shortly after, but by then, the kid was gone, leaving no trace behind. To this day, I still can't explain what happened that night. Was it a ghost, a figment of my imagination, or something else entirely? All I know is that it was the most terrifying experience of my life, and one that I'll never forget. Thank you for sharing your stories, Mort. It's always fascinating to hear about these encounters and experiences. Your narration really brings them to life. And I'm sure your viewers appreciate the effort you put into your content. Keep up the great work. And I look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Stay awesome and take care until next time.